We arrive in Riga and we take a turn around the upper deck before we have breakfast. It is a town of old and new and drab new. The old is from the 15 and 1600s, the new is from the turn of the 1900s to 1930 or so, and then there's the drab new from the time of Soviet control. And as the new does not last, this 1960s block has been condemned and stands empty. Riga is listed as a World Heritage Centre, and bronze plaques and street-level signs remind you of this at each of the roads entering the old town. We cross one of several bridges to the newer side of town, depressing Soviet-era buildings, and then a modern building sited in front of a tenement block, alongside a centuries-old church. In the town, old buildings of many different styles crowd together. Be especially worried if you are a private owner, as, with the current recession, you will get no help in restoring your building, but you are not allowed to let it get run down since the town became a heritage site. To give a bit of balance, he has a very modern building, a not so modern building in the Art Deco style, and a fairly new bridge over the river Daugava. To the right, the State Opera House, and to the left, Kronvalde Park near the Frieda Monument. Here there are flowers, fountains, the wedding's padlock bridge. On your wedding day, you place a padlock on the bridge and throw the keys into the river. In the same way that the padlock cannot now be opened, so your marriage can't be divorced. It's a fairly old tradition, lost in the mists of time. Freedom Square has a tall obelisk surmounted by a woman holding aloft three stars representing the three states within Latvia. There are wreaths at the base and two soldiers standing guard alongside. Whether this is a daily situation or a memorial day, I was not able to find out. This is the Roman Catholic Cathedral and the little black mark on the tower is the Fidelity Bell. Many years ago, fishing was a major occupation with the fleets away for weeks at a time. Upon their return, the men would walk their wives or girlfriends under the bell. If it rang out, that told them that they had an unfaithful companion. We are taken to the Lutheran Cathedral for an organ recital, the reason we have chosen to take this tour. It starts. I love church organs for the power they can project and the 20 minute program is excellent. The organist turns out to be a very young lady, quite something to have the skills and techniques to be allowed to play the largest church organ in Europe. This building has the shields of all the towns in Latvia on its end wall. The Norwegian god Thor stares down from a building, reflecting upon one of the many nations that have at times controlled the Latvians. The streets of old Riga are all cobblestones. Back in the 1700s they were made of wooden boards, but these needed constant replacement. A stone tax was imposed. To enter the city you had to present two stones, no smaller than a standard cobblestone. So, if you were a local and left the city boundary, you had to find your two stones to pay your tax to come back in. This statue represents the Bremen town musicians and is a gift from the German town of Bremen, twinned with Riga. Kissing or rubbing your nose on the nose of any of the animals will bring you good luck. The higher the animal you can reach, the better luck you will have.
You can see their shiny noses and those up high are mostly from people stroking the noses. Riga has the famous cat house, not because it is a bordello, but because it has two statues of arched black cats on its towers. This is the House of Blackheads, a very ornate building. The original building was erected during the first third of the 14th century for the Brotherhood of Blackheads, a guild for unmarried German merchants in Riga. The structure was bombed to a ruin by the Germans in June 1941 and the remains demolished by the Soviets in 1948. The current reconstruction was erected between 1995 and 1999. More of the elegant buildings of Riga. The one with the blue facade is the home and offices of the French ambassador to Latvia. An avenue of trees leads to the Russian Orthodox Cathedral. No photography permitted inside. I went in to be amazed by the amount of gold on view and the sheer extravagance of the display. The outside is actually very austere by comparison. This statue of Lenin stands in Bastion Park and we can find nothing to explain why it was left after the Latvians obtained their independence from the hated Soviet oppressors. Between 1945 and 1991 it is estimated a third of Latvians lost their lives in an intentional Soviet extermination. You have to park your car exactly as shown in these street signs. Views of the Pelsitas Canal through the Kronvalda Park. The Wedding Padlock Bridge spans this canal. Riga has the longest street of terraced houses, it is claimed, in the world. These having been built initially as a military barrack for senior officers. Can't let a cat go by without it being included in our trip memories. It's another hot day, and the flags hang limp from the masts as we reboard, ready to cast off for Klapida. Randall's style of house and an older wooden structure, seen as we head down river. We stand on the promenade deck to view the 11 miles of river navigation to the mouth of the river Dalgava, passing a factory and loading point for what may have been grain, then a deserted factory building, a busy coal depot, and a really rusty bucket. The modern pilot control station is soon behind us. A seagull reluctantly takes to the air ahead of our bow. A brief glimpse of the Latvian Navy. Before, at the mouth of the river, the pilot boat catches up with us draws up alongside and takes our pilot away to his next ship. With our cruise ship moving, the Latvian flag at the mast comes to life as we sail away to Klapida, Lithuania.